Welcome back to another video everyone. Today I am bringing you another review, this time for Phantom's Revenge, a hyper coaster at Kennywood in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. In 1991, a ride called Steel Phantom, which was manufactured by the now-defunct Aerodynamics, opened at Kennywood shortly after the Coaster War began in 1989 with Magnum XL200. Steel Phantom featured the longest drop in a coaster at the time at 225 feet and was also the fastest at 82 miles per hour. Steel Phantom had an awesome second drop as it was the biggest on the ride and went down into a ravine over the Thunderbolt, but it also featured four inversions, and these were known to be pretty uncomfortable for riders seeing as they were flying into these at great speed out of the ravine, and they were just the standard size inversions you see on all old aero coasters. Trim brakes were added before these inversions to attempt to fix these issues, but it didn't help much. Kennywood announced in 2000 that the ride would close after that season, much to the dismay of many enthusiasts, many of whom would try to change Kennywood's mind on removing the attraction. Kennywood ultimately decided that they would hire Morgan to come in and do modifications to the layout, effectively saving some of the original Steel Phantom. Thus, in 2001, Phantom's Revenge was born. This ride doesn't feature any inversions in favor of a more simple hyper-style layout featuring many ejector airtime hills. The first and second hill were saved, resulting in this ride having both Arrow and Morgan track. At least a few years ago, some more of the original Aero track was replaced with Morgan track, resulting in only the station and chain lift featuring Aero track currently. Approaching the entrance and sign for Phantom's Revenge, you will walk under the first drop and through a long path leading up to the station. The station for Phantom was actually originally used for Laser Loop, a Schwarzkopf shuttle loop coaster that operated on this plot of land from 1980 until 1990 when it was removed for Steel Phantom. The station retains a Phantom facade covering the front end, and there are still no gates to this day in the station, just a yellow line to stand behind. This station very much seems like a relic of old Kennywood. When it is time to load into these trains, you will find that they are very unique. The chassis are actually reused from the aerodynamics trains on Steel Phantom, but Morgan rebuilt the body, and these trains are among the best I've ridden in. They feature a seat belt as well as a lap bar that comes down from the side, and it doesn't come down very far, which leaves lots of room. Once leaving the station, you will make a slight turn to the right and engage with this very long lift to the top of the ride's 160 foot tall lift hill. Once cresting the top, you twist down to the right on the first drop, which I actually find to be pretty decent. This is followed by a short straight section, then you climb up the second hill, where you will then hit the ride's signature element, the 228 foot plummet down into the ravine, also getting a nice head chopper effect as you pass underneath Thunderbolt at 85 miles per hour. The bottom of the drop here is extremely forceful, as is this huge left bank turn following it. After the bank turn, you twist to the right, dive underneath the Thunderbolt again, and make a long turn to the right past the Tumblebug. You will then traverse two small extreme ejector airtime bunny hops, the second one with a double down, then turn to the right while hugging the ground, then rise up into one more bunny hop, then up into the final brake run, ending your 45 second, 3,200 foot long journey on Phantom's Revenge. One thing about Phantom's Revenge is that it is pretty short unlike most conventional hyper coasters, only featuring 3,200 feet of track. And since you are traveling at a top speed of 85 miles per hour, it doesn't last too long, but it does feel like a full ride experience. What it may lack in length, it absolutely makes up for in its positive and negative forces. I rode this in July of 2019, and it had been 8 years since my last visit to Kennywood. I forgot just how intense this ride's positive g-forces really are. You really feel it at the bottom of the second drop and through the bank turn, and even the first twisting drop is much more forceful than it looks. Of course, what really makes this ride truly spectacular is its many massive pops of pure ejector airtime. This ride does not mess around. It features some of the most intense ejector air that you will find on any coaster. They are not sustained, but several quick pops where you are just thrown way up out of your seat, and those amazing lap bars are definitely a big reason for that. If you are a fan of extremely intense ejector air and sheer speed and force, Phantom's Revenge is a ride that I feel you must experience. As I mentioned, my recent rides came after an 8 year gap of visiting Kennywood, and prior to visiting this year, I had Phantom's Revenge ranked quite highly in my overall rankings. After getting a couple rides on it again however, I just had to bump Phantom's Revenge up several spots from where I had it. 
and I now consider it a top 10 roller coaster for myself, and I feel it is absolutely worthy of that. I have even seen enthusiasts who have ridden several hundreds of coasters that have this ride ranked extremely high in their overall rankings, and I can definitely understand why after getting more rides on this masterpiece. In my opinion, Kennywood and Morgan really hit it out of the ballpark in redesigning the Steel Phantom into what we currently have as Phantom's Revenge. It seems to be a much needed improvement, and will be around haunting its riders for many decades to come, I believe. For a final score, I will give Phantom's Revenge a very solid 9.5 out of 10. This ride definitely isn't perfect, but it comes close to it, and it does what it was designed to do extremely well. The only thing I would have maybe liked to see added to this ride is another bunny hop or two at the end, but as I mentioned earlier, this ride does not feel incomplete at all really. It would be great to see Phantom get a much needed repaint soon as well as updating the retro station from Laser Loop. But as it stands, this is quite the top notch ride. If you have ridden Phantom's Revenge or the original Steel Phantom, let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you've ridden both, do you find the overhaul to Steel Phantom to be an improvement overall? I would love to hear what you have to say about any of this. I hope this review has been helpful to you, and if you enjoyed it, you can find this and all of my other coaster reviews in a playlist on my channel for you to view. Be sure to like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Also, subscribe for more roller coaster and amusement park related content like this in the future. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.